Tales from the Arabian Nights, edited by David Folds. The Unhappy King There was a great king named Sharia. He is a good king, but his wife betrayed him. He asked the executioner to cut off the head of his wife, and so his wife died. The king became sad because he can sleep at night and he can imagine his wife in another man when it is daytime. He called the wazir or the chief of the servants. The king thought that he can spend another night alone, so the wazir thought that the king would want to marry again, but the king does not. He thought that women are unfaithful. Then the king came up with a plan. The wazir will get a woman for the king, so the king will not sleep alone, and at the morning, the executioner will cut off the head of the woman. Every night means another woman, and every day means another beheaded woman. The wazir became sad, because he doesn't want to bring any woman to their death. But he's so hesitant to disobey the king, and he's afraid to the executioner. The wazir cried, and his daughter heard him crying. Her name is Scheherazade. She asked her father why he is crying. The wazir tell everything about the king's doing to his daughter. Scheherazade came up with a plan to stop the king. She will be the next wife of the king. Her father does not agree to her plan because she might die, but she still pushed through. So Scheherazade lay down on the king's bed and she began to tell a story. The king seems interested to her story. He cries on the sad parts and he laughs on the funny parts. The story is so long that it took them a whole night and it's already morning, but the story is still not finished. The king wants Scheherazade to come back at night to continue the story and so the king asked the executioner to spare Scheherazade. Every night, Scheherazade will tell a story and will not finish it, so the king will ask her to come back for the continuation. Days, weeks, and months pass. Good thing Scheherazade knows so many stories. Each story are new and too long to finish before morning. The Genie in the Bottle there was once an old poor fisherman. One day, while fishing, he pulled his net and he caught none but a dirty old bottle. He thought that he can sell it so he cleaned it and noticed that it is sealed, unaware that the seal is from King Solomon. So he opened it and saw that it was empty, so he shook it. Dust came out until it forms like a huge man. A genie. The genie looks scary and doesn't look friendly at all. The fisherman was frightened and prayed God to save him. The genie started talking, but noticed that the one he is talking is not King Solomon. So the fisherman said that it was him who opened the bottle. The genie threatened the fisherman that he will kill him right after he tell his story. The genie told the fisherman that King Solomon once beated him and made him a prisoner inside the bottle and threw it on the sea. The fisherman said that King Solomon already died a thousand years ago. The genie cried because he lost the chance to get revenge to his enemy, so he thought that the fisherman could take King Solomon's place to be executed. So the genie took out a huge shiny knife. The fisherman just smiled and even the genie lifted his knife above his head, he is still smiling. The fisherman started to ask questions like where the genie came from because it's not stupid to think that a genie with a huge sword would fit in a tiny bottle that even his small body couldn't fit in. The genie said that a genie is powerful to do anything, 
but the fisherman still refused to accept that. The genie got peace. So to make the fisherman believe, he went inside the bottle, and aware that the fisherman is just tricking him. The fisherman quickly sealed the bottle, and the genie was imprisoned again. He said that he will tell the people about this bottle, so they will know not to open it. He thanked God, and he threw the bottle into the sea. Aladdin and the Magic Lamp There was once a tailor called Mustafa, who was Aladdin's father. Aladdin was a very poor lazy boy who did nothing in life. His father was very hard working, but suddenly he died, so Aladdin's mother was left to do the works for them to survive. One day, a strange man came in front of Aladdin and introduced himself as a brother of the late Mustafa. Aladdin told his mother that he met his uncle, but she was confused because Mustafa has no brother at all. However, the strange man whom Aladdin calls uncle convinced them to come with him so he would be rich in an instant. The strange man commanded Aladdin to get the magic lamp in the cave. He gave him a magic ring to protect him from danger while he searches for it. As he get the lamp, he also saw magic fruits and get some and put it in his pocket. Aladdin found the lamp but he refuses to give it to his uncle because he wanted to go out first before giving it. His uncle got angry and sealed him in the cave. Aladdin shouted and shouted, hoping that he can get out, but he accidentally rubbed the magic ring that his uncle gave him a while ago, and he wished for it so he got out of the cave. Aladdin got home with the magic lamp and told his mother that the strange man was a magician. When cleaning the lamp, a genie appears and grants all their wishes, especially expensive foods. A genie brought them food on a silver dish and they sold the silver dish in the market. For several years, the magic lamp helped them survive in life. Aladdin and the Princess One day, Aladdin went to the market to sell a silver dish to other buyers. He also offered magic fruits that he got from the magic trees, but the shopkeeper refused to have those since he should keep those as treasures. In a minute, people suddenly got into their shops and that created a lot of noise. The shopkeeper told Aladdin that the daughter of the king will pass the street and the king commanded that no one must see the face of his daughter. Aladdin got curious about the princess face. So he hid and took a glimpse while the princess took her veil off her face. Aladdin was mesmerized by the princess's beauty. So he told his mother to get to the king's palace and offer him magic fruits in exchange for his daughter's hand in marriage. The king was glad about the jewels and told him to wait for three months to know his decision because his wazir offered his son also. But about two months ago, he heard a news that the princess was going to marry the wazir's son. Aladdin did everything to prevent the wedding with the help of the genie. He put the groom into privy and have the princess by his side. The princess also fell in love with Aladdin the moment she saw him. The king told him that 
he could only marry his daughter if he can give him 40 platters of gold. He asked for it on the magic lamp and with that the king allowed him to marry his daughter. The king accepted Aladdin as his son, as he saw a palace near his, which will serve as the home of Aladdin and his daughter. Meanwhile, the magician who was introduced as Aladdin's uncle learned that he was using the magic lamp, so he tricked the princess to change the old lamp of Aladdin into a new lamp. Aladdin was out of the palace, so she thought that it would make Aladdin happy to have a new lamp. But then, Aladdin came home, and he did not see his palace as well as his wife. The king ordered his servants to cut Aladdin's head, thinking that he was betrayed by a magician. He was still given a chance to find the princess. So he asked the genie from the ring to get his palace back, but the genie cannot do it. So he turned it into a simple wish to bring him to where the palace now stands. He saw the princess there, but he hid himself because the magician was downstairs. He thought of a plan to make the magician drinks a wine with the drug with the help of the princess. Quickly, the princess took the lamp from the magician and gave it to Aladdin. A few seconds later, their palace came back near the king's. The king welcomed them again and with open arms and they live happily ever after. Ali Baba Ali Baba is a poor woodcutter who secretly watches as 40 thieves hide their booty in a cave. The door to which can be opened only by the verbal command of open sesame. He later uses this magic praise, still reaches from the cave and lives a prosperous life. The thieves eventually suspect Ali Baba and they hide themselves in large oil jars that with the unsuspecting Ali's permission are stored overnight in Ali Baba's courtyard. When the slave Morjana goes to extract oil from one of the jars, she hears a robber whisper. Morjana realizes that the jars contain not oil but robbers lying in wait to kill her master. She pours her hot oil into each jar, thus killing the robbers. Morjana later saves Ali Baba's life a second time, and in gratitude, he frees her. She marries Ali Baba's son, and the entire family lives prosperously on the wealth obtained from the cave that only they can enter. The Tale of Sinbad the Sailor When I was still quite young, my father died and left me all his money. I bought a ship, I paid the captain and some sailors to work for me. I was sure I was going to make a lot of money. We sailed far away across the sea. At last, we saw a small island. It wasn't very big. Just a yellow beach and a few small plants. Some of us decided to go on a land. The captain was asleep. We did not wake him. Two of our sailors took a big wooden barrel full of dirty clothes. Perhaps there is a fresh water on this island, they said. It will be good to wash our clothes in fresh water again. We lit a fire on the beach. Suddenly, we saw some water shooting up into the air. It flew up higher than the tallest tree. Then it dropped down again. I closed my eyes and rubbed them. 
when I opened them again, I could not believe what I saw. The island comes to life suddenly, we heard the voice of the captain. He was awake now and he could see what's happening now. Come back to the ship, he shouted. You are in horrible danger. The island is moving, the sailor shouted. We ran to our little boat. The ship was sailing away from us, and the island was going down. Already the yellow beach was smaller. We are on a huge fish, one of the sailors cried. Our friar has woken it. He was right. That was no island. It was the sleeping body of a huge fish, the largest fish in the world. For years and years it slept. Now it was awake and it was also in pain. Its huge tail flew up into the air and fell on our little boat. The boat broke into the thousand pieces. I was frightened. I thought I was going to die. Do you know what saved my life? It was the stupid barrel of dirty clothes. I saw it beside me in the water and I held on to it and climbed in. The sailor went down with a huge fish to the bottom of the sea. The strange charge the ship was far away. I was alone in the wide empty sea. I do not know how long I was my barrel, but at last I woke up on the wide beach. Where am I? I thought if I climb a tree, perhaps I can see something. I climb the tree, look around. Far away, I saw a huge shining white dome. There must be charge over there. I cried. I walked very fast on my poor tired legs. Toward the dome, when I arrived, I found no doors or windows. The whole dome was a white and smooth as an egg. I did not understand it. Suddenly, the sky grew dark. When it a rain cloud, I looked up and saw a huge bird. Larger than the biggest cloud you have ever seen. It was a great giant of bird. The largest bird in the old world. Then I knew something else. The charge was a bird's egg before I could run away. The bird flew down and sat on its egg. I was a prisoner under its great hot body. My turban fell off my head. That made me think of a plan. The Man with Three Wives A married doctor marries two other women in jungles in life with three wives. Sidi Ahmed was a lucky man. He was a nice ho home and a pretty wife. A medical researcher with a wife and children becomes involved with and marries two other women. In everyday life, that cutting wood in the forest, it has been sold, all of that in the market. But his first wife is very jealous to the forest due to Sidi Ahmad is always in the forest. Sidi Ahmad have a clever plan to her wife. He slowly let her down in the deep, dark well. He climbed quietly. He climbed on the donkey back and rode away. When it was getting dark, he went back to the well and got ready the angry voice of her wife. He suddenly shocked because he found a genie. Sidi Ahmad looked at the beautiful girl and he said that he wanted to marry that girl. The beautiful girl have an ill and her father suggests that the man who makes her daughter's well will make her husband. Soon, Sidi Ahmad married the beautiful girl. He left her wife in the well and the will get ill and Sidi Ahmad did not go to the girl. 
But the sequence is still the same. The other girl have an ear and he fell in love again and don't mind to the two wives of her. Then get, well, do they married again? At, le- at last, Sidi Ahmad had three wives, but at the end, he loves her for his wife at all.